All esteem to the Most High Elohim. This is your brother L. There's times that come where we have to have heart to heart conversations with each other. So this is not going to be a teaching per se or a scripture discussion per se. This is just going to be a conversation that we have about the state of our people right now. Me being the person that I am, uh, I'm very observant and I really keep my finger on the pulse of what's going on with my people. You know, my people's mentality, uh, my people's overall emotional state, spiritual state, all of the above, as well as that on top of receiving emails and correspondences from brothers and sisters that are reaching out to uh, whether it be to ask questions or express certain concerns or just to have conversation. There's it's beginning where I'm starting to see a pattern in what's going on with a lot of our people, uh, whether it be the questions they have, whether it be some of the discouragements that they're experiencing, whatever the case may be. And there's times where I just want to come on here and just have a heart to heart with our people and speak to a lot of these questions I've been receiving, uh, concerns I've been hearing from brothers and sisters, because if I keep hearing this from multiple people, if I keep seeing the same topics coming to me from multiple people, that lets me know that there's probably even more people who are feeling this way or have these questions and they don't, you know, know where to go or where to look, uh, afraid to ask, whatever the case may be. So I want to speak to some of those concerns and situations that's going on with our people right now. One of the main things that I've been seeing lately, brothers and sisters, is there's a lot of our people that seem to be uh, discouraged and disappointment and they feel they've been let down of all the people bringing all this hype to the whole 2019 uh, 400 year dynamic. There's a lot of people right now that literally legit feel let down, disappointed. And uh, there's people just throwing their hands in the air saying, what's going on? They got us all hyped up about 2019 and the 400 years uh, they had us thinking we was going to get up out of here. You know, earlier in the year, you had people, especially online, that was hyping up the whole government shutdown thing. And they were saying, this is it. I, uh, you know, the, 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 the 400 years is up. The, the, the government about to get shut down. The father about to touch down and just getting people all ramped up and, and hyped up, getting their hopes past the ceiling. And as usual, things went right back to how they normally are. The government shutdown ended. Trump still uh, the president. Negroes is still out here in the streets running wild, being goofballs, being enemies of their own people. The adversary is still ramping up his program. Business as usual. So many brothers and sisters that I've heard from and that I've been observing are flat out disappointed. They feel they've been pumped up only for nothing to happen. And there's new people to this channel who don't know about the approach that we've always had here at Victory Success Destiny Ministries. And that approach has always been to encourage the people of the Most High to endure. Focus on enduring in this walk. Don't focus on dates, time periods. Don't let these uh, prophecy pimps get you pumped up, hyped up, having you hope in something, hope in a certain day, hoping in a certain year for some event to happen. And then it doesn't transpire. And unfortunately, this is what I'm starting to see happening. People are flat out disappointed and discouraged. These prophecy pimps had them literally thinking they was going to get up out of here as soon as 2019 hit. They had them thinking the chariots was going to come get them. They had them thinking they was going to be in the wilderness by now. And none of it happened. Family. This, this is no laughing matter. And I'm not here to make light of the situation. I'm not here to uh, sit here and say, you know, I told you so and, and rub the knife knife in deeper. 
That's not what we're doing here. Cause I hate to see my people down and discouraged and disappointed. That's why we constantly try to warn brothers and sisters. Don't get caught up in the hype that these people push. Focus on enduring. The Messiah said that those who endure till the end shall be saved. So focus on enduring. So family, those of you that's feeling like that, all I can say is that there's many others just as myself who have tried to warn you not to get hyped up with what these people say, that something is going to happen at a certain time. Please, for those who have not checked it out, check out a video in my archive called Beware of the 2019 Prophecies. Last year, around this time, that video was made. And in all humility, I tried to tell brothers and sisters that these people are setting you up for a disappointment, man. And here we go. We got all these brothers and sisters discouraged and disappointed that the deliverance is not happening on the time frame that these people pumped them up for. So once again, family, focus on endurance. We don't know how long the Messiah will tarry. We don't. So in these times, we got to stay repented up. We got to keep the commands. And in a natural aspect, we have to position ourselves to be able to provide for our families in the interim while we await the return of the Messiah to set up his kingdom. And this goes back to other talking points that I'm always pushing. I know Negroes won't listen, but I still got to say it so their blood won't be on my hands. In the interim period, while we're waiting on the Messiah to return, the things that we need to be doing are developing skill sets. For our survival. Things like learning to grow our own food. Things like knowing how to deal with animals. Things like acquiring land. And drawing ever more close to the off grid lifestyle. And here's what it takes in order for us to do that. We have to be able to thrive in this society that we currently in right now. This means learning certain skill sets like computer coding, because right now society is transitioning to the digital age. So people who position themselves to run online businesses, learn how to do computer uh, coding and computer programming, since so many things will be run on 5G and IoT and the Internet of Things. It's good to have those skill sets so that you can be an independent contractor and people can pay you for your skill set. And you can use those monies that you gain from working by using your skill set to acquire land, to then move to the land, growing food on the land, dealing with animals on the land. Because like I said, we don't know how long it will be before the Messiah returns. But little by little, with the advent of artificial intelligence and with the ever widening gap of the haves and the have nots. You want to already be in position to not need the system by the time the father decides to destroy the system. You want to already be in position where you know how to thrive and survive in the wilderness. And in, in many cases, in order to get in that position, you have to know how to thrive within the society in the current times. And in the current times, the things I'm talking about, about a, us acquiring skill sets and being owners, owning our own business using our skill sets to get monies for ourselves by people paying us when we perform our skill set and craft, that will be how we can slowly transition to needing the system less and less. And I know, brothers and sisters, that doesn't happen in one day or even one year. It takes time to slowly transition and come out of her, my people. So that's the things that we need to be focusing on in the interim period. Not hopping from video to video, uh, getting pumped up about dates and prophecies that never materialize when these people s say that they're going to materialize. All that will do is leave you disappointed, discouraged. And guess what? All that time you spent, you could have been spent researching how to add on to your skill set so that you can earn resources to provide for your family 
and occupy yourself until the Messiah comes. But instead, all that time was spent consuming all these videos, getting pumped up on all these false prophecies. Then when it doesn't materialize, your feelings are hurt. You're disappointed and you're no more prepared for the end of this system than you were a year or two years ago. The enemy allowed these people to be used to steal your time and to steal your mind and to crush your hopes and leave you in disappointment. I can't tell nobody who and who not to listen to. That's not my lane. All I can do is warn the people of the most high. Be careful of the stuff that you're listening to. Because there's many voices out here and the enemy is using them to leave many brothers and sisters in a state of disappointment, discouragement. And some people are even starting to lose faith now because these folks got them pumped up about 2019 and they, they got their hands in the air like, man, what's going on? So I've been getting too many correspondences, emails. I've been getting uh, too much feedback from brothers and sisters that are discouraged and disappointed that nothing has happened that these people have said. All I can tell y'all is stay repented up, keep the commands and begin to look more towards ownership, begin to look more towards independent contracting, Begin to look more towards developing your own skill set so that you need the system less and less. So when the time comes where the father does decide to finally judge these heathens, you ready and you have skill sets and you have faith and you are spiritually ready to transition into the wilderness and endure to the end. But until that takes place, family, we right here and we right now. What you going to do with it? That's the only question I would have. Now, let's let's have a heart to heart about some of this other stuff. I've been getting a lot of correspondence, emails, whatever the case may be from brothers and sisters who are starting to get confused about all the different uh, feast day dates. You got one group over here that keeps the Passover at this time. Another group over here that keeps the Passover at that time. And brothers and sisters that are reaching out are just flat out getting disappointed and discouraged about the conflict and information that's out there. Here they are trying to obey the father, keep the Passover, keep the high holy days and the Sabbaths. And they toss to and fro by all these different doctrines, calendars, camps, congregations, family. I know this may hit some people very hard because they're new to the walk. But the truth has to be told. There is just as much confusion and division and lack of unity within the Hebrew community, just as it is in the Christian community. It hurts to say that, but it's the absolute truth, family. The Hebrew community is not on one accord whatsoever at all right now. So, Whenever you see all these conflicting doctrines, conflicting calendars and dates, family, just understand that that does not reflect on the most high. The scripture says that we prophesy in part. We have not had our total regathering yet. Yeah, there, there are some people that are deliberately deceiving the people, but there are others that are doing the best with the information that they have. So. What I'm not going to do is get into saying, no, you need to keep it this date or no, you need to keep it that date or no, you don't need to be keeping it then. What I will say, family, is study to show yourself approved. Take a look at Leviticus 23. Study up on the book of Enoch. Do your own independent study to seek out the answers to those questions. And when I say your own independent study, I'm not talking about clicking on a YouTube video. I'm talking about you getting out those scriptures and those books for yourself, fasting and praying to get understanding from the father on his correct times and forgive other brothers and sisters for them not having the answers on certain things. And don't let that deter you from still obeying the father to keep his holy feast, because that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants you to get so confused and just energy drained that you just throw your hands in the air and say to heck with it. I mean, you, you, 
It's too many conflicting information. I can't keep these feast days. This is too much. That's what the enemy wants you to feel like, family. He wants you to get overwhelmed. He wants that spirit of anxiety and just being overwhelmed. So eventually he just wants you to say, man, to hell with the whole thing, man. That's what he wants you to do. So. Family, do not allow all the conflicting doctrines and feast day dates and all that stuff deter you. Keep the feast. Keep the high holy day. Obey the most high. Hallelujah. Because no matter what date that you keep it on, it's going to be some Negro that comes along later saying that's the wrong date. You're not keeping it at the right time. It's better you keep the feast than you don't. And you're going to have to do your own studying. You're going to have to seek the father for yourself on being in his correct time. Because if I go into a whole scripture breakdown, uh, trying to support one date over the other, all I would be doing is contributing to the confusion because all Negroes would do is listen to that video of me breaking down all the dates, uh, the correct feast days and this calendar and that calendar. Then they would click the video off and run right over to somebody else that's teaching the exact opposite and then feed off that table, click that video off, then go to somebody else teaching something totally different than what the other two Negroes was teaching. Then they'll start getting. Cl you see how that works? So family, do your own research and independent study on that study to show yourself approved. I'm not going to tell you what date versus another date. What I'm going to tell you is keep the feast, keep the whole entire Passover feast. Keep it. Hallelujah. Now. Let's go to another uh, thing that's going on now. As much as I really do appreciate uh, those who listen and tune in to the discussions, I really, truly appreciate the support of brothers and sisters. But. There are times where I get concerned that. Let's just put it like this. I've had instances where brothers and sisters have come and told me that uh, they may have gotten to uh, arguments, disagreements with their significant other. And what some brothers and sisters are doing is saying, uh, like some of the sisters telling their husbands, uh, you need to be more like brother L or uh, brother L would do it like this. So straight out, I'm going to say right now, sisters do not do that. Do not do that. Your husband is the leader of your household. You listen to him and his leadership. Don't throw brother L in your husband's face saying you need to be like him or uh, you, you need to listen to what brother L got to say. Don't do that. That's your husband. You show him honor and respect as your husband. He is your leader and you follow him as he follows the Messiah. Now, I understand that there's some brothers out there that are not following the most high nor the Messiah. And there's scriptures that also tell you how to deal with that by your holy and righteous conduct, how you may even be able to win those brothers over to the side of the truth. But sisters, do not throw me up in your husband's face. That's the worst thing you can do to a man, because essentially what you're doing with that is trying to make him feel like he's in competition. He is not in competition at all. He is your leader. Follow him as he follows Messiah. Look, I'm here so brothers and sisters can have successful marriages, successful families, successful Hebrew family units and tribes. I'm not here to be splitting nobody up. So whatever arguments and disagreements is going on, Keep brother L out of it. Keep me out of it. Don't use my name to uh, try to win an argument against your significant other or try to make somebody feel like they not measuring up. Because, look, I'm not even measuring up to the Messiah. I haven't measured up to my king. So don't this is just for the sister so far. Don't be uh, bringing up my name to your husbands like that when I haven't even measured up to the Messiah yet. 
If you're going to do anything, bring up the Messiah to that brother, to your husband. Use the Messiah as the measuring rod. Encourage your husband to reach the measuring rod of the Messiah. That's who we striving to be like. Hallelujah. The Messiah. And likewise with the brothers. Don't try to uh, make your wives feel low saying, uh, why can't you be like Sister Mercy or, you know, bringing up my wife's name saying you need to be more like Sister Mercy or uh, li listen to this and see how, you know, you need to be like Sister Mercy. Don't do that either, family. Please, please. The example that you need to be looking to is the Most High, the Messiah, and be led by the Holy Spirit. Yes, that, that there's nothing wrong with us having people that we look at as examples that give us inspiration and motivation to get to a certain place in a walk. That's fine. But never let it get to the place where you're using somebody's name to win an argument or using somebody's name to try to make somebody somebody feel low about themselves. Don't do that, family. Don't do that. That right there is what causes drama inside households the husband and the wife y'all are to come together in the spirit of the most high and work out issues with each other and measure each other by the word of the most high don't measure y'all marriage y'all relationship by these negroes that you listen to on youtube don't measure y'all marriage or even your personal walk with the most high by the negroes you see on instagram and facebook and all that you know they look like everything's so perfect. They got their long, nice, colorful Hebrew robe with the fringes. They got they uh they got their head covering on. You know that they, they speak perfect Hebrew. They got the big old long Hebrew name. Got all the little children in the picture. They got on they uh all white Hebrew robes with the fringes and all that. And everything's just seems so perfectly Hebrew, don't it? Family, do not measure yourself up against that stuff. I'm telling you the truth. Do not do that amongst y'all marriage and amongst y'all self. And here coming up soon this weekend, I'm going to even have my wife come in and we're going to do a joint discussion about this to drive this point home even more. That amongst y'all hold up the word of the most high, the laws and commands of Torah, hold up the Messiah as the measuring rod and nobody else. Hallelujah. I got to throw that out there, too. Because I get correspondence, I get emails, I get phone calls from brothers and sisters and I get disturbed sometimes because they're, they're using my name to say, Brother L said this, Brother L said that, you need to be more like Brother L. No, don't do that, family. And once again, we're just having a heart to heart with this. These are things that need to be thought about. These are things that. In our quiet time, you know, like those Selah moments that I talked about a couple of days ago. These are the things that we need to be focusing on. So I just wanted to come in today and touch on those things, because when whenever I'm experiencing a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of these emails, calls, text, whatever the case may be with these concerns and people expressing these things popping up. I know that there's more people who feel like that. And um I just really felt felt it that that I needed to say that today. Uh, do with that whatever you want to do with that. But at the end of the day, what I hope you get from this is endure and prepare. Endure and prepare. Prepare mentally, physically, spiritually. Be like those wise virgins that you have your oil, you have your skill sets, you have your survival skills, you have your righteousness and holiness. Without which no man will see the most high. You have your faith. You are equipped spiritually, mentally, physically. You are equipped in all aspects and you have the strength to endure. Let that be your focus more than all these other distractions, especially the distractions that come from online. I tell brothers and sisters all the time, a hey, cut the videos off, even cut me off. Turn, turn my channel off, turn my videos off. And I don't care how long it takes, seven day fast, 10 day fast, a month, 
Even if you cut out listening to uh, online teachings altogether, if that's what it takes for your mind not to be distracted, for you not to be confused and discouraged, do that. Family, whatever it takes for you to get close to the father, do that. Do that. Even if it means cutting my discussions off, cutting the next person's discussion off, whatever you got to do, man, to make it to the kingdom, do it. Do it. This walk is too real for you to be wasting your time. And like I said, I didn't come in here to throw a bunch of scriptures around and all that today. We are just having a conversation right now. And I really hope you take these words to mind. All right. Join us tomorrow where most high will. We will go over some more precepts that will give us edification, strength to endure. If you so feel led to participate, check us out April the 20th. We're going to be doing a live stream at 7 p.m. Eastern to connect with the people. Definitely hope that you link up with us for that. And um, also check out some of the other projects of the ministry. I'll put the links in the description box for you to check out the Laws of Torah audio book, the Words of the Messiah audio book, Words of the Most High Father audio book. Check those out. I feel like those can really be an addition in your spiritual walk. And other than that, family, stay vigilant, man. Stay focused out here. Develop your skill sets, develop your spiritual walk and be ready to endure to the end. And don't let nothing that these Negroes is talking about distract you from making it to the kingdom. Hallelujah. Shalom.